Hi, it's Mike Shaheen with HHO Connection. I wanted to do a quick video for all the do-it-yourselfers out there who are into building their own dry cells. I get questions through emails and I see them on the forums all the time from people who are new to HHO who want to build their own dry cells but uh, are looking for tips on how to make it more efficient. The cell you see right here was built by a local builder. Uh, his name is Aaron Hughes. Hats off to Aaron. I'm in Simi Valley, California. He's a local mechanic who owns his own shop here. And he made what is, a, I gotta say, for the first stab at it, is a really, really nice dry cell. Now, he came to me about a month, little over a month ago asking for tips on you know, how to make the cell more efficient. He had done a few cells in the past that were kind of a cruder form of a dry cell and some wet cells, but he was looking to take it to the next level. So what I, should, what I told him is just some tips that I've learned from, from the, the guys that I look up to on the forums who have built some, some pretty amazing cells. Uh, these are tips that, um, you know, take it for what it's worth. You'll see, you'll see some guys argue that, that, that what I'm about to show you here uh, will make your cell more efficient. You'll see other people say, oh, it doesn't do anything. So again, take it, take it for what it's worth. These are tips that I've learned and hopefully are going to help you build a better dry cell. Okay, the first thing that you're going to notice about this dry cell is that it's more of a rectangular shape, kind of like a license plate as opposed to being square or, or taller, uh, narrow and tall. And the theory behind building them in this fashion is that the less surface area of the plate that the gas has to travel up before it escapes out the port and back up to the reservoir, then there's, there's less chance for the gas to get backed up and, and, and you know, causing the, efficient, the electrolysis process to be less efficient. So again, the only theory there is that by, by, by having it wider and short like this, the gas basically just escapes faster. So that's a the theory behind the shape. Uh, the next thing you're going to notice about the cell is that these plates have been sanded. I actually suggested that he media blast the plates, but I guess Aaron didn't have access to a sandblaster or just wasn't able to get it done, so he opted to, to sandblast the plates, which, again, you'll, you'll see uh, varying uh, opinions out there whether sandblasting your plates or, or, or sanding your plates will work or not. But, again, I trust the heavy hitters on the forums who, who say pretty much 100% across the board that if you media blast your plates, I believe they use aluminum oxide slag, uh, don't quote me on that, but media blasting the, pl the plates, which basically at a microscopic level creates a bunch of the tiny little pits uh, and is, going, is uh, increasing the surface area on your plates, which allows you to get more production. So, highly recommend media blasting your plates. Um, next thing that you're going to notice on this cell is the holes at the bottom down here. Usually on a dry cell, you'll notice the holes to circulate the water are right in the middle. Well, the theory behind this one is these holes alternate on this front plate the holes on this side and on the next plate the holes over here and every plate it alternates back and forth back and forth and again the theory behind that has to do with current leakage if the holes were all lined up in one line like that uh, the current's going to take the path of least resistance from the positive back to the negative plate and go right down the middle there if the holes alternate like this after this first plate, it has to go through the next plate or work its way all the way over to here. So again, it's cutting down on that current leakage. You're not eliminating it, but it's cutting down on the current leakage quite a bit. The next thing you'll notice is the top of the, the top of the cell has slots. Now again, the jury's out on this one. This is a, there's one particular uh, member of the forums that I trust quite a bit, and he really swears by the slots. And the way it was explained to me is, again, the gas, you want to have it rise up the plates and get out as quick as possible. So if you just have one hole in the middle or a couple holes, the gas needs to come up, hit the gaskets at the top, and, and has it have a tendency to coagulate or you know build up and then work their way towards that outlet and then out. Where this way with the slots, it's letting the gas escape almost immediately once it comes up. But the other thing you have to look at is with these slots, especially three of them like this, it's, it's causing more current leakage because you have more open area that's exposed. Now the last thing that you can do to your cell, it was not done to this one, but I, I, highly, I highly recommend it, I think Aaron's going to be doing it in the future, is there's a product called Weldon 16. I guess Weldon makes all kinds of glues and adhesives, but this one in particular, Weldon 16, uh, guys have found that they can, they can use it to coat the holes, any, any holes that you have in your plates. It's a very tedious process. You one at a time have to take the plates, and coat both sides of each hole and paint like a little grommet, maybe a quarter of an inch back around all the holes. 
And what you're doing by doing that is, is basically painting a little grommet that's going to seal that electrical um, current from, from leaking out of those holes and bleeding out. You're not creating a 100% zero current leakage cell at that point, but you're getting close. And in doing that, it cuts down on the heat quite a bit because if, if not, I won't say almost completely, but uh, if you do everything that I mentioned here, um, chances are you're going to have a cell that's, that might not even need a PWM at all because it's going gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna to take care of quite a bit of the heating issues. Anyway, like I said, my hat's off to Aaron Hughes. He did a great job on building this cell, and I'm going to run a, a quick liter per minute test, MMW test for him. I promised him I'd do it and see what kind of efficiency he's getting out of the cell. Okay, I'm going to do a quick liter per minute test. And first of all, I want to thank Dan over at Hydrogen Boost Now. He sent me this nifty little uh, 40 amp PWM to test out now. Right now I'm running at just about 20 amps. Uh, my volts, if you check up here, it's 11.55. Okay, it's going back and forth between 5.4 and 5.5. Five. Um, and before I do the test, I want to show this real quick. I've had some people make comments on other, other liter per minute tests I've done saying, thinking there was some sort of secret I was doing down here at the bottom. This is nothing more than a T. I have the hose coming from the bubbler up here, plugging into the T. And when I get ready to do my timing, I just plug this hole with my thumb and then start the stopwatch. So here we go. And I'm going to start right now. Again, this is a 500 milliliter bottle that I'm working with, half a liter. Almost there. And time. 22.7 seconds at 20 amps and 11.55, yeah, 11.55 volts. Those are some really good numbers. I tell you what, Aaron Hughes, hats off to you. He did a fantastic job building your own dry cell. Uh, again, for everybody else out there who wants to build their own, here's some tips for you. Um, hopefully you've learned something here today. And uh, do me a favor, if you do end up building your own dry cell, email me at mike at hhoconnection.com. Send me some pictures. I'd love to see what you've done. Good luck and take care.